Hello everyone, my name is Matt and welcome back to the farm. Over the last week or so we've seen a pretty steady growth in our channel both in views and subscribers and thanks to you we really appreciate that. If you're new to the channel and you haven't subscribed please hit that subscribe button. Also hit the notification button and that'll keep you up to date on when we put out our latest videos. So with that if you're new we are a small livestock farm here in western New York and we primarily sell our products directly to the consumer. So in today's video, we're gonna talk a little bit about selling directly to the consumer. Today we're gonna to focus more on the beef and pork side of things and really how there's two options for us to do that here in New York State. So as a small farm, we have two ways of selling our beef and pork off the farm directly to the consumer. We can sell it either by the retail cut or we can sell it via freezer trade. Before I get into explaining why we chose the route we did, I'm gonna first give you a brief description on what each is. You can find on YouTube many different farmers that do the same thing we do. Um, and they sell retail, freezer trade, whatever. But nobody really talks about you know how or why they chose a path they did. Well, we're gonna do that today. So selling retail is what most people are familiar with. You go to a grocery store, and or farm store and you buy a specific cut you're looking for and you pay whatever that cut is worth. The price ranges widely across the board when it comes to retail cuts. On the opposite side, you have selling freezer cut or sometimes what's referred to as custom exempt. Um, you are buying quantity. You're buying either on the beef side of things, you're buying a quarter, a half or a whole cow. On the pig side, you either buy a half or a whole pig, and you're, you're paying one set price for all the types of cuts that you want. Most uh, processing facilities will give a cut sheet and allow the customer to have it custom cut to their liking. So before you can decide whether you're going to sell by the retail cut or by freezer trade, there's a few things that play into it that you need to take into consideration time and geography and it all starts even before these animals leave the farm so if you're going to sell by the retail cut here in new york state you have to use what's called a usda certified inspected processing facility and on the geography side of that there's only two that are located within an hour radius of our location here and to reach out to them and find a processing date which i have looked into they go back to their previous customers from the year before first. They get first choice at butcher dates. So that makes it hard for somebody new like myself to even get a butcher date. The best I could come up with with one of those butchers was getting put on a waiting list for the fall of this coming year for a cancellation. On the freezer trade side of things, you use a different style of butcher, which is called a custom exempt butcher here in New York State. They are still governed by, I believe, the federal government, and they are inspected, their facilities inspected. But as far as having a USDA certified inspector on site every day, that, that's not the case. In our area, in that same hour radius, I could come up with seven or eight different processing facilities, one of which is actually only four miles from my house. If the animal was halter broke, I could literally walk it there. So now that we've talked about our processing facilities and which one we would use based on the type of selling method we are interested in. Now we need to look at our customer base and how we're gonna reach that customer base because they're not just gonna come knocking on your door if you put an ad out and say, hey, I got beef for sale or pork for sale. So selling by the retail cut, the most general methods to do that are either at a farm store or a farmer's market. Around here within an hour's radius, we don't have any year round markets. So we don't have a place we can go sell year round on a weekly basis and sell our product. Yes, our county has multiple um, farmers markets throughout each town, um, but that only encompasses about five or six months out of the year. Selling on the freezer trade side of things, yes, you have to look for a customer before that animal even leaves a farm, but generally those customers, you know, are friends or family. 
um, that are looking for a quantity and they like having the choice of being able to go down to their freezer unexpectedly and say, you know what, I want a steak tonight or I want a roast tonight or we're going to have spaghetti and, you know, put ground beef in it. Um, they like having that option to just go to the freezer and see what they got. And usually they're buying enough to supply at least six months worth of their living. So with those customers that are able to buy a six month supply of beef and go down to their freezer, usually they end up buying twice a year. So you end up with a year round income from those people. So that's one nice thing about freezer trade. The other thing I like about freezer trade is it's really less handling of that product and it's a lot less waste because when that customer is being able to fill out a cut sheet, they're getting exactly what they want. There's no waste. Anything that they don't want to say they don't want roast, they just get ground up and they become ground beef. They just end up with more ground beef. On the retail side of things, I'm deciding what to have cut up. And if I'm going to a market every week and I bring certain cuts, you know, the steaks are going to sell out fast. Ground beef is a pretty good seller, but roast may not always sell the fastest. And some of the other stuff may not sell as fast. So you may be sitting on it for months. So you're going to have product in that's taking up space that you're not selling. It's going to take you months to sell. Where on the freezer trade side of things, it's much easier to move a product. You pick it up. I can deliver it to my customer. I hand them a box and I can wash my hands with it and walk away. So that's where the time aspect of it really comes into play. Now that we have talked about our processing facilities and also reaching our customer base, now we need to talk about the profitability of it all. Yes, selling retail is more profitable. I sat down and did the math based off of the animals that we send to the processing facility. It'd be roughly about a 20% increase in profit if we were to sell by the individual cuts. The trade-off to that is, is by selling freezer beef, we're not sitting on cuts for months and months that just don't sell or never even sell. This way here, the animals being used the way the customer would like, I'm happy because it's a fast transaction, it's money in the farm's pocket, and it's just, it's a faster way for us to do business. And on the other side of that, reaching out and getting a butcher date with a custom exempt butcher is a little bit easier because there's more of them than there is USDA certified processing facilities. So there's a lot that plays into which direction you go. And when it comes to time as well, we have full-time off the farm jobs. So we don't have the time to be able to go to two or three or four different markets a week to be able to sell our product. So, you know, it works out better for us to be able to sell directly to the customer. And that's the way we started. And that's the way we're gonna keep going for the foreseeable future. So I hope this video was a little informative and in helping you decide if you're looking to start a small farm on which direction to go to market your product. There's many different options. Um, you just have to look and see what's available in your area and what might work best for you. Uh, selling freezer trade has worked well for us over the years. We're gonna continue to do that. Uh, we do wanna look into expanding into you know, the retail side for maybe the summer market season as well to capture you know, that side of a customer base that we think we could get. But we'll just have to see where we go from here. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you like our channel, please subscribe. We greatly appreciate it. We'll see you next time.